breaking news this minute. The Supreme Court of Ghana has ruled against the Speaker's uh, earlier ruling that determined that the majority side had become a minority side and the minority side had become a majority side. But more importantly, the Supreme Court has also ruled a stay of, the, a stay of execution of the Speaker's ruling that the four MPs vacate their seats in Parliament. I want to take you to the Supreme Court right now where our court correspondents have been all over this issue. We'll start off with Joseph Akable, who's the chief legal correspondent here. Uh, Joseph, take us through what happened in court in the last hour. Yeah, so short one. <laughs> Well, it would appear uh, that we cannot hear Joseph Akable, but I can tell you a bit about this breaking news that is coming in in the last few minutes. Uh, we understand that the Supreme Court has vacated that ruling uh, in Parliament where uh, Speaker Alban Bagbin had indicated that the four MPs who were cross carpeting could no longer hold themselves out as members of Parliament, for which reason their seats were uh, ruled vacant. Uh, the result of that was the majority side, which was the MPP side, then became uh, a minority side, while the, majority, the minority side, which is the NDC side, then became a, uh, a majority side. But you recall that the leader of the NPP caucus in Parliament had indicated that there was already uh, an injunction motion that had been filed in, in uh, the Supreme Court, uh, for which reason the Speaker's position on the matter was, uh, was not valid, was invalid. But the Speaker responded to say that nothing had been served on them at the time the case was called or the matter was decided on in Parliament. Uh, now we understand that there has been an ex parte motion Thought that the Supreme Court subsequently ruled upon uh, almost immediately at the Supreme Court. Now, what this means is that the motion was filed without necessarily informing the uh, respondent side, which would be perhaps, uh, you know, the Speaker of Parliament and Parliament in general uh, in, in this case. And so the uh, majority side, together with their legal counsel, went into the Supreme Court, pled their case. The Supreme Court has agreed with them. The Supreme Court says that, look, the Speaker needs to put aside his ruling that those uh, seats be made vacant, uh, which resulted in the indeed, which resulted in the uh, NDC side becoming a majority side. But let's get details of this. What you just saw on your screen is Katie Amontre's minister, who's obviously been addressing the press post the ruling from the Supreme Court. Uh, Joseph Akable is our chief legal correspondent. He joined us via telephone this time to tell us a bit more. Uh, Joseph, before we go into the nitty-gritties of the Supreme Court ruling, we just saw uh, Katie Hammond in our view. What was he saying? I mean, he's quite excited. And the point that he made is the fact that uh, yesterday, when he had addressed the interview, he had made a point quite strongly that as far as he was concerned, he believed that the Speaker of Parliament was wrong and that this was a matter that ought to be left to the court to determine. And he's happy that they come to court and they've got the court to agree with them. And so in terms of the remarks by the Creative Minister Chief Yamon, he makes the point that this concerns their view. And so what we expect to happen on Tuesday from the majority side is that they are coming back to Parliament. You recall from me they had issued a statement in which they had indicated that because of the decision that had been given by the speaker, they were avoiding parliamentary business until the determination of the matter. So Alexander Sanya said the majority that makes the point that with a directive from the Speaker, they are satisfied. And so, as a result, they are proceeding to show up in Parliament on Tuesday to take their right to place as a majority in Parliament and for the final determination of this particular matter. Mm, I see. Let's go back into court and how things proceeded there, uh, you know, during the hearing of this matter. Well, so first, it's an ex parte motion. And for uh, those connected with us, we are unfamiliar with that. And it simply means that you filed a case against someone and you file a process in which that individual you file the case against 
it's not made aware of the process that you found. And so we found the process, asking the courts to hear them today on a request that they put on hold uh, the orders that were issued by the Speaker of Parliament yesterday. And so once that request was made today, it meant that the Speaker of Parliament, the Attorney General, who were parties in this particular case, did not have a presentation. So the court basically had lawyers for Alexander Fenner Martin, the majority leader, uh, who were represented by Patricia Abedu, as well as a former Attorney General Joe Gatti was also part of the legal team. And so once the panel started, the Chief Justice itself presided over the panel together with other four judges. And so once the case was called, they heard the arguments from them. And the arguments they made essentially were to the effect that the decision that the Speaker delivered had far reaching consequences in that it's denying people of representation, it's affecting the rights of those members of parliament who were not even given a hearing in the first place, and that there's a pending case, a case that has been filed challenging the move as to whether there is a basis for those seats to be declared vacant. And so the point they made was that, look, if this matter is outstanding, why should the, 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 the parliament of Ghana be proceeding on it? So when it was brought to the attention of uh, the parliament. And so those were the arguments that were advanced by the lawyers. And once they made those arguments, uh, the court then went on a short recess to consider the arguments and come out and deliver its ruling. And so the court went on recess, and when it returned, the Chief Justice uh, herself read the ruling, uh, indicating uh, in simple terms that to the effect that, one, the, the, the Speaker of Parliament was aware of the pendency of this particular matter. The court said that yeah. the justification the Speaker had given about the fact that the service was not carried out on Monday, the court said that that was not satisfactory and that the they were aware of the process. And it again says that the issues that are raised in the court matters are serious constitutional issues. And the directive that has been issued by the Speaker has far reaching consequences in that it means that for an indefinite period, these four uh, constituencies will be without representation immediately. And so the court said that on that basis, it believes that there are serious constitutional matters that is us to hear and determine. And so on that basis, in fact, even the request that had been made was asking for a suspension for 10 days. Ordinarily, ex parte motions uh, and orders that are granted last for 10 days, but the Chief Justice, in delivering a ruling, did say that at uh, this order that is issuing, one suspending the speaker's directives declaring the seats vacant will be enforced until the determination of this case. And number two, Parliament is to recognize the four individuals as members of Parliament and allow them to show up in Parliament and perform parliamentary duties until the determination of the matter as well. And so those were the two main points. But beyond that, the court has issued parroting directives to guide how the case should proceed. And so the first directive is that within seven days, because earlier we had all made the point that, look, there are constitutional processes that ought to be followed. Ordinarily, when you file a case within eight days, you would have to enter appearance within 14 days, you have to file a statement of defense. The court is now saying that within seven days, it expects that the bare statement of defense by the party should be filed. Then beyond that also, after that seven days again, they are supposed to ensure that the memorandum of issues, which is simply the lawyers telling out what they believe are the legal points that this case has to be centered around, they have to also file that as well. And once they file that, then the last, the next day will be that the court will have the hearing. And so within some 14 days, we see some action taking place. But the conclusion of it all, if you are joining us, is that uh, the parliamentary situation prior to the speaker issuing his directive has been restored by the Supreme Court. It's still 137 plus 1 for the NTP and 136 for the opposition and this is the orders of the Supreme Court issued a short while ago, Kenny. And they're here, but thank you so much. There'll be more on this in later broadcasts. I do want to bring in uh, Kweku Ansa Asari just before we wrap up on our breaking news coverage uh, this hour. He's uh, former president of the uh, Ghana Bar Association. Uh, uh, Council, we, in fact, the assumption before now was that there was no way there could be a hearing on this matter before now. Are you, surpri are you surprised by what we hear? Uh, no, uh, let me correct um, my description. I'm uh, not the former president of the bar station, my former director of the law school. Thank you very much. I apologize well, for that. Well, I'm, I'm not surprised. You see, we, uh, I said yesterday, you know, ours is a democracy. The whole world is watching us. We are baking, you know, for, for Africa. And the Supreme Court has spoken. We may agree or disagree with the Supreme Court, but the law, in the rest of them, it lies in their bosom, not in ours. 
And in accordance with Article 1293, if they are spoken, it is binding on everybody. So my appeal is that so we are showing the world that we are capable of resolving, you know, our issues uh, before the court. There is one good thing for the Supreme Court. Let us abide by what they have said and leave, you know, um, individual disagreements in, uh, in the, in the, in the party. I, uh, the, swiftness, the swiftness of, of hearing this matter does not surprise you in any way? Yeah, the, the, no, because in the Supreme Court, and you have to say that, and they are, I said, um, we may agree or disagree with them, but in their collective wisdom, they, they think that Parliament should allow, you know, the iconocrats, you know, to continue to serve the nation in their capacities you know, that uh, they were before the tickets were in yesterday. You know, that's the beauty of democracy. I see, but so, what would you say to I people who would, that who would argue that? has a very critical role in shaping and reshaping, you know, our political transitions. So let us, you know, encourage them to do that. Another time, you know, they may say something that we would um, all, you know, criticize them for. But... The, 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 there's so much tension, you know, in the country at the moment. There's mm. so much anger in people. So let us respect the rule of law. They are talking. They are the last word. They are the final court. Indeed, Council, hold the line for me. I'll come back into the studio now. Uh, I have with me Dr. Dominic Kayene. He's a former Attorney General and also Bogatanga East MP. Uh, thank you so much for former joining us. Form, for, indeed, former Deputy Attorney yes. General. Yes. Today, it seems that <laughs> perhaps, perhaps it's the situation at hand, the, the right, adrenaline right. of breaking don't, news. Don't worry, yeah. But, but your side may have jubilated too, too soon, if, if what we're hearing right now, you know. Well, I don't think we jubilated too soon. Um, the Speaker's ruling went down very well with us, and we thought that it accorded with the letter and spirit of the Constitution, and we still stand by that, you know, position which we took. Of course, the order of the Supreme Court now means that we are uh, back to the status quo ante. Mm -hmm. That is the situation before, um, you know, the speaker's ruling. Okay, but that, I mean, I must say that this is a very disturbing development. Uh, the reason is because, you see, for them to go ex parte, to obtain an ex parte order means that the speaker was not on notice. Parliament was not on mm -hmm. notice. And Parliament is just a stone throw away from the Supreme Court. You know, and ex parte orders are an anomaly, all right? They are used to address really emergency, real emergency situations where irreparable damage will be caused if there is in the, you know, the, I mean, order is not obtained, mm -hmm. all right? But in a situation where um, there was an attempt to serve, okay, an inter-party order, an order on notice, mm -hmm. all right? And that service even violated the directive of the Chief Justice, you know, which is to the effect that a service on the Speaker and Parliament generally should be effected on Mondays. All right. Now, that's a Chief Justice directive that is binding on all registrars of the court and is binding on all litigants and parties. Yet the, the majority leader or the former majority leader, I will continue to emphasize that, the Honorable Afeo Markings attempted to effect service on Tuesday Right. Or, or, and Wednesday, and when it, it was not, I mean, the service was not effected, he got frustrated, you know, and, you know, I mean, uh, started throwing tantrums all over the place, mm -hmm. okay? Now, with this development, basically what you are doing, you know, is to tie the hands of, of Mr. Speaker and Parliament. Very well. You know, yeah, no, well, but... So, so, of course, then, that, that will raise questions about you know, whether or not the Supreme Court could be interfering in the business of Parliament. Yeah, and, uh, and you see, I said this is a worrying development because, you see, there are three coordinate branches of government, co-equal mm -hmm. branches of government, all right? One branch of government should not be seen to be unduly interfering in the, in the workings of another government. Waiting for one week, or let's say next week, you know, to serve the Speaker, for the Speaker's lawyers to come to the, 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 the court and defend the merits of the injunction or to oppose the injunction on its merit is not something that the Supreme Court, you know, could not have done. And one, one a surprising, I said it's a surprising development because the Supreme Court rarely, by convention, sits on Fridays. 
So mm -hmm. for them to have convened on a Friday so quickly mm -hmm. to, 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 you know, make orders as extensive as they are mm -hmm. against Parliament, I'm, I'm Does really, it make I'm, you suspicious? Well, that I, there don't, could be, I don't want that, to, that I don't could want, be. I don't want to talk about suspicion, but I am surprised that they would do something like that because they have been equally, uh, you know, urgent matters, matters of national importance like the anti-gay bill and so on, you know, and these cases are in the back burner. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I mean, the, Supreme, the uh, Supreme Court came out with a presser about the issues and so mm. on. But they could, because there is a bill, a law that has been enacted, the president has refused to sign the law mm. the, and on the, base, on the excuse that there, is, there are pending matters. That is urgent because we are constitutionally, I mean, obligated to make laws for this country. We have passed a law. President says that because you have not made a determination, he cannot sign the law. Mm -hmm. All right. And you have, you know, you don't think that that is urgent. Right. But then when it comes to the issue of representation and by the way, um, the question of representation being lost is contemplated under the Constitution itself. Article 97 contemplates that at some point in time in the life of a parliament, there will be vacancies occurring. Mm -hmm. The fact that the vacancies occur because people have cross carpeted or decided to turn themselves, join another party who has been in parliament as independent and so on, it should not be the basis for saying that representation should not be lost, right? Representation, the, I mean, can be, uh, the people can be deprived of representation in a constitutionally justifiable manner. And, and, and would this, this case, have been one of those it, conditions? This is one of the conditions. It's one of the conditions where you, I mean, representation is, contem I mean, con uh, uh, deprivation of uh, representation is contemplated by the constitution itself. And for me, Mr. Speaker's ruling, you know, was spot on. It's not because it advantage, I mean, it, it gave us an advantage as the, the minority now turning, you know, into a majority, right? Mm -hmm. But because on grounds of principle, the factual basis for the occurrence of a vacancy or vacancies, okay, you know, was, was well founded. Mm. Perhaps the Supreme Court felt the situation was urgent enough for it to hear the the case as well. I mean, to be honest with you, I have not seen the court papers, and I can, I don't know what uh, you know was uh, said in the affidavit in support. Mm. All right, so I cannot talk about that. But do, do you mean, consider it an urgent situation? I don't think so. I don't think so. Okay, but, so, but it, it could I have mean, it could have put. I mean, with 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 the uh, you know the majority minority now majority is very confusing at this point are saying that they were going to boycott the legislature. It could have put parliamentary business at risk. Perhaps that creates well, in, an urgent in some, situation. In some sense, yes, because I don't think that if they boycotted parliament, the executive branch of government would have been comfortable passing through, you know, I mean, passing business through the, I mean, the, the new majority to parliament, right? So, yes, in that, in that sense, you can say that government business would have, would have I mean, uh, suffered, Okay. However, parliamentary business as a whole doesn't, it's not only about government business. Mm -hmm. Parliament can conduct its business based upon motions uh, filed by, the, by its members, you know, bills initiated by its members and so on. And the country, you know, can still go on without uh, um, the majority being, I mean, the minority side, you know, being in the house. Is the country in crisis? Well, I think that there is, yes, we are in a crisis mm -hmm. um, and it's a deep constitutional crisis. I don't think that the Supreme Court should wade into this in a way that shows that it is interfering seriously in the workings of the legislature. Mm. Because, you see, Parliament also has its role to play. The Speaker has a role to play. So each time Speaker says something, then you run to the Supreme Court. And, you know, the funny thing is that the Honorable Afeo Markin was even in court before Speaker said something. All right, so um, he filed an injunction you know, to restrain Mr. Speaker in respect of matters that, you know, I mean, uh, uh, that had not yet occurred, okay? Because the Honorable Harun Edusu raised the issue, you know, in a meeting in, uh, I mm -hmm. mean, uh, uh, at a rally in Tamale, okay? He quickly ran to court and, and, and sued, okay? And if you listen to the debate, we on our side, and I made that, I mean, uh, 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 I raised that issue personally, that look, the court does not deal with hypothetical situations. Okay, the law is very clear. In Bilson and Apalo, 
the court said, we cannot deal with hypothetical situations. We deal with, I mean, real controversies, okay? Real controversies that have legal implications for the rights and liabilities, you know, of the parties that appear before the court. So you don't come to court asking us, you know, I mean, asking the court to give a ruling uh, on a matter that you anticipate will occur, okay? That be that if when you come to well, court which, in that fashion, I mean, which made it easier then for the Supreme Court to, uh, you know, sit on the matter after the speaker had now, uh, you know, m made a case in in Parliament. But, but but you see, yeah, I mean, not to go into the legal technicalities, but you see, when you file a writ, that writ is founded on certain factual occurrences, certain matters that have occurred as a matter of fact, and they are usually contained in, your, state, in, the, in, your, in the, your statement of case, which is verified by an affidavit. Basically, you swear to an affidavit saying that the facts stated in your statement of case mm -hmm. are true to the best of your knowledge and belief. All right? Now, what facts did he swear to? Right? Mm -hmm. what, what facts did he verify right. in his statement of case? Right. I mean, you and I do not know, right? But, but if he did, are those, those facts materially different from the facts now prevailing mm. based upon which he's gone for the, I mean, the ex parte order. Right. Okay. Right. No, so it's, there, are, there are questions. I, I, get that, the, I get the argument right. you're making and the questions that you're raising, which, which you know, sound valid yeah. w w while we talk about it. But I also guess that your, your side in parliament will not take this lightly. Um, well, okay. We, we, we certainly, from a political standpoint, we will not take it lightly because... It reverses the balance of power in Parliament. Indeed. And, and we, you know, we, we you know, think that legitimately we deserve to be in the majority. So we won't take it lightly from a political standpoint. Now, from a legal standpoint, we are not a party to the action. Mm -hmm. right? the, the, the NDC Minority Caucus is not a party to the action. And therefore, it, I mean, it is Speaker and his lawyers who will have to deal with the legal issues arising out of and in connection with this, I mean, a suit that has been filed. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, I mean, I have, I, I have not talked to them, I mean, the Honorable Atu Forsin, the, I mean, uh, uh, minority, the majority leader, mm -hmm. right? But I, I suppose that given the fact that it will substantially alter the balance of power, it may be in our interest to file an amicus brief in court, you know, to, to, to bring, I mean, certain matters to the attention of the court. Mm. Because you see, the way the court is going, I have been concerned about the judiciary interfering, you know, frequently in the workings of parliament, all right? A speaker gives a ruling, in res I mean, in respect of giving reasons for his, I mean, uh, the, I mean, the basis for informing the House that vacancies have occurred, all right? And immediately the court says, no, you cannot, I mean, uh, you, cannot, you cannot do that, mm -hmm. um, you know, because it will deprive people of representation and so on. The, the court can interpret the law right, and enforce the law, okay? But the question is whether on the merits of what uh, the Honorable Afeo Marke has filed, okay, there is, uh, there is an actual basis for saying that, okay, the speaker was wrong in saying that mm. the vacancy, I mean, vacancies are forked. I, I mean, not only would the, uh, your side yeah. in, in the legislature figure out what to do next, uh, uh, in terms of the ruling from the Supreme Court, but it will also have to figure out what to do by the I mean, fee Central MP who has now decided to go independent after losing in the primaries. Mm -hmm. What happens to him on your side? Well, I mean, it, it, the, the order of the uh, Supreme Court covers him, right? And as my senior, the um, former director of the, I mean, the, the Ghana School of Law, um, Ansar Sari, has put it, we are a country governed by laws. Mm -hmm. Unless we want to turn ourselves into a banana republic, right, um, we, we have to obey the orders of the Supreme Court. We can contest them, all right, by, you know, I mean, uh, showing the court that um, its orders were not justified or they were not legally tenable and so on and so forth. You know, but we, we will have to admit, you know, the honorable uh, member for Memphis Central, you know, into our, into our, our midst again. I mean, I mean, as, yeah, but what we can't say, um, you see, if we, I mean, it doesn't even make political sense for us to seek to exclude him. Because if we do... Oh, no, I understand that. So right. It will not make political sense for you to seek to exclude him. Yes. But what I'm driving at is whether or not he will make practical sense 
for somebody who had officially, you know, appealed to the Speaker to remove from the House, yes. the Supreme Court has had a, you know, a different opinion on that. It's ordered that, it, you know, it not be done. Well, in you fact, expect him to? The, you expect him to side with you in Parliament after this? Well, if he doesn't side with us, then we have a basis to kick him out. If he doesn't, we have a basis to kick him out. It's a right? catch twenty-two for him. Well, yeah, because you see, if he comes to Parliament and decides to caucus with the MPP, he would have been caught squarely again by Article 97, and we can fire him from our party. And if we fire him from our party, he will have no leg to stand in Parliament. So he's better off, you know, I mean, coming, coming to our midst and, and being part of us. For a nation in crisis, in the event that, you know, Parliament does not adhere to the Supreme Court ruling, yeah. what happens? Well, I would advise Parliament, you know, in all its wisdom, um, of course, left, I mean, uh, um, I respect the speaker, and he's, uh, he's a very matured, um, you know, an, an experienced person and a senior lawyer. So I expect that he will do, you know, the right thing by the Constitution, okay, which is to abide by the orders of the court, all right? And, and by abiding by the, court, the orders of the court, the status quo ante, as I've said, will be restored whilst he fights the, I mean, the, the, this in the, the case that has been brought mm. by the Honorable Affairion Market. Very well. Olive here, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Uh, the breaking news the last few hours uh, here in this country, the Supreme Court has set aside the Speaker's ruling, determining that some four seats in Parliament uh, be made vacant. The result of that was the majority side then became a minority side, and the minority side became a majority side. What this means, how it it, you know, it plays out what it means for the Ghanaian people also. More of that in subsequent broadcasts. But that's the latest news coming in in the last hour here in the country. And your election command center has been detailing some of these to you in the last uh, 30 minutes or so. There'll be more in later broadcasts. That'll be all from us. We'll continue with regular programming. Playing for your country, and you're easy. Scoring, and you're easy. Avoiding injuries, and you're easy.